Okay, welcome back, everybody. So happy that you're here. We now are doing a lot of questions. We have, uh, Sarit says 13 questions. So I know we're going to try mm -hmm. and barrel through them. These are all on chapter one. Next time, next show, we're going to start with chapter two. And look at that. We're getting making progress here, but we want to cover all of the uh, questions from chapter one or as many as we can. Okay, Sarit, you're on. Go. Okay, so yeah, so in chapter one, you discussed um, there was control was a very big topic that was that was discussed in the beginning. So we have a few questions on that. Okay. Um, uh, Gemma asks, um, how do you discuss the topic of control when you start dating, meaning before you even get married? Is there a way to discuss the issue of control so that it doesn't become an issue later on? She's already passed that, but she wants to know for her children how she can teach them to have this conversation. I see. Um, control. So that that wouldn't necessarily be a conversation you'd have with your husband or with somebody you were dating. That would be a conversation that, I mean, that would just be a way of behaving, you know. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, tell your husband, well, I don't like when you have control and I'm, you know, I, I, the only way I could see a good conversation about control would be if you want to tell your husband, you know, I realize I, I'm, I'm, a, 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 I run a, 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 a dot com startup or I, uh, you know, I, ru I run a bookstore, you know, and I'm bossing people all day long and I'm controlling what goes on and micromanaging everybody. And that's kind of my day job. So now I feel like um, when I come home, I feel it's, I, it's hard to shut that part of my brain off. And I feel like I'm too controlling of you. I'm working on trying to not be so controlling. And, you know, if, if it's possible that you could give me a red flag, let's see what's a good send, what's a good keyword we can say, because I don't want you to have to be my policeman. But if you feel that I'm controlling you too much, maybe say tuna fish sandwich, or maybe say, you know, or maybe, you know, say, uh, um, you know, uh, can we have a time out for a sec? And then, you know, and tell me, you know, right now, I feel like you're controlling me too much. In the heat of the moment, if, if you see that, that's not going to go well. Maybe don't do that, dear husband. But but I really want to work on this. I, I'm so determined. So maybe you could help me with it. Let's try it. And then if he starts doing it and he starts saying, you're controlling me right now, and it really backfires and say, you know, I'm going to work on this on my own because I see that we can't, you know, you have to have good communication with your husband for that kind of a conversation. That's the only way I would think a conversation about control. It's not like that, that I would have my husband. It would be, I would change my behaviors as much as possible. Not the conversation isn't going to be as productive as uh, that productive. I don't think except the, that example that I gave, I can't imagine on a date, if you're talking about control, it could be that you could say, you know, look in our modern era, women think that they need to control and men want control and, you know, causes a lot of, comp, you know, problems. And that maybe would preempt then when one of you tries to take control, you can say, you know, you see this, this is a whole control issue. I'm not sure I would leave it. I, I wouldn't necessarily even have a conversation about it, but in terms of my behavior, that is when you find yourself about to bark out an order, get the duck tape out, okay? That, you know, just when, when you see that you're trying to control the situation, or you're trying to micromanage the situation, or you're not letting them do the thing that they want to do the other, the way they want to do it. Um, it's, it's a, um, uh, um, that's what you need. We need to, work. we all need to work on it with ourselves and all of us. And I'll tell you, I, you know, for, for uh, we're having an event, a forum thing, whatever. And I had a, a lay around, what are those things called? You know, the Hawaiian things, you know, with all yeah, the, yeah, lay. There's a, yeah, lay. Mm -hmm. So L E I G H, see, not, not, not lay, yeah, but a lay. Anyway, so um, I had one on and there, there was a pink one, a bright pink one over there. You know, I think I had a turquoise or a blue or whatever. My husband took the pink and he put it over me also which was a, a giving and a receiving right let me having two lays while you're trying to eat your meal you know but i kept it on i kept it on because taking it off would have been controlling wouldn't have been not receiving the gift he was like oh but here's a pink one i know you like pink and turquoise so here you go you know it was a, a gesture so it's a question of by the way leah you do know that your husband was just branding you because that's your brand yeah right Turquoise and pink. Yeah, he was basically saying that's your colors. Ladies, yeah. talk show. There you go. There you 
sure. So yeah. So, but the point I'm making is that it, it, letting him have control or letting him give to me and being a receiver, even though, okay, well, look, if it was, if it was really bothering me, I could have taken it off. You don't have to be a martyr and, and be a doormat with a big welcome sign, you know? Okay. It didn't bother me enough to warrant me taking the lay off and having him feel like, oh, she didn't like what I gave her, you know? So, so yeah. Okay. Anyway, go to the next question. Good. Did that answer? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. And um, Gemma says in terms of control, so she's not trying to control her husband, but she has a perpetual irritant in her marriage. She says, what can I do to be less irritated in the moment when my husband brings me flowers that I hate? So she almost wants to control him not bringing her flowers. <laughs> And says, how does she go about doing that? I wish that was like everyone's problem. Yeah, right. the no, no, it's, their true. Is it's true. But uh, someone said to me, you know, someone was crying to me because they their housekeeper could only do Tuesdays and Thursdays instead of whatever. And they were crying. And I called a rabbi. This was very early in my career or whatever. And I called a rabbi and I said, you know, she's crying about like, she has a housekeeper. I have other people who are calling who have no food on the table. You know, like, are you joking? And he said, no. He said, that's part of everyone has their their um, tikkun that they need to do in their life. Everyone has their problems and you can't belittle them and you can't make them feel badly about, you know, maybe, you know, as she gets older, she'll realize that she should just be grateful that she has a house and a husband and children and, and you know, and a housekeeper two days a week instead of three days a week or whatever. And maybe that won't be a, a crying matter, but you have to give everybody the attention they need. Anyway, her problem is that she's getting flowers and it's irritating to her. So what's irritating her is not the flowers. It's that she feels like he doesn't care about her feelings or doesn't pay attention to what's what she likes and what she doesn't like, which is a reasonable thing to feel upset about. Um, how she handles it makes all the difference. And also receiving, you know, I received that lay. I didn't really want the lay, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, the, the let's start with square one, which is as human beings from the time, you know, we're, we're born and, you know, in getting through our, our, our young adolescence and our early adulthood in our, um, in, into our twenties or whatever, we're starting the process of self-mastery. And one of the things that all of us need to be working on, one of the reasons we're put on the planet to work on is Savlanus. And Savlanus is being able to, to carry the yoke or the burden of irritants and to, you know, it's like, there's so many things that are annoying in life. And are you going to be like, yeah, it didn't go my way. <laughs> you know, are you going to be that person? Or are you going to be the person? It's not going my way. They're really, really annoying me. I wish they would just go away. But you just don't let your face show any anger. Don't let your face show any irritation. And you just l let the moment happen. God himself created the moment that you're in right now. Yeah, he maybe surrounded you with irritating people at the moment, but everyone, I had a woman and she was newly married like three months. And she said, in my entire life, I never had anybody who treated me this way, who talked to me this way. And, you know, I get along with everybody. All my friends from high school, they all say I'm the easiest person to get along with. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you don't live under the same roof. You know, it's a different test. You know, it's much easier to get along with a friend who sees you see once every two weeks than it is to your next door neighbor who you hear them playing loud music or they're they're mowing their lawn for the third time that day and the police you know so the carrying irritants and irritating around is part of our avoda we you know when when you're a, a baby and something irritates you and someone takes a toy you scream your head off hopefully by the time you're you know in your 20s and and, and 30s and whatever you grow into being a person who can who carry the yoke of the irritants around you. And that's a project that is most, most crucial in marriage. So whatever he's doing that is irritating you, um, the, the first thing is to learn to be, a, 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 to, to learn to have sublanus, to learn to have patience with the, and I'm using patience loosely because sublanus is really much more and deeper, but, but it's basically carrying the yoke of that person when they're irritating you. So that's first of all. But the other aspect of it is there are things you can do. You can say, listen, I know, love ranunculus. They're my favorite flower. They're kind of, they look like carnations, but they're just beautiful. They're like peonies, but they're 
how do you explain a flower? But anyway, maybe we can flack. Mm. <laughs> maybe uh, our, our, our show, maybe I actually don't even know what that flower is. So if you could, oh, yeah, they could show it. That'd be so great. So if you can show, put a, just a picture of a, of a, mm. of a binoculars. Anyway, they're just beautiful flowers. They're hard to find and very, which is very annoying. But, but anyway, the point is that when he gives you the flowers, you know, thank him profusely at the time unless you have an allergic reaction to them and say, oh, I love them, except I have to take these ones out that I'm allergic to or whatever. Some flowers make people sneeze. I have someone in my family like that. So, but then you can say when you're out and about say, see these roses? I know they're more expensive, but they're so beautiful. And rather than having flowers every week, I'd rather have the roses every other week or something. You logically in your mind, you're smart. You've been a Sarah, which is women's intuition. You can think of solutions that are easy for him. If he buys those flowers, because on the way home, there's a, a flower vendor on the street that you know makes it easy for him and she doesn't sell roses. Okay, you might be out of luck. But a lot of problems can be solved with simple solutions that a, a woman gets mad that her husband didn't think of himself. But you can, you've got smartness and you can make these things to lessen the the irritation the a woman's husband is very very nice but he has some kind of denture work i don't know what it is and he clicks when he eats which drives her crazy so right that she used to sit there so irritated during dinner now what they do is they play music he doesn't really like it but he puts up with it because she doesn't hear his clicking while he, the music is on so it's 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 a, a compromised situation and he's okay with it because he doesn't want to irritate his wife so thinking of ideas, get a notepad, get it something, an app or something like that and start writing down all kinds of potential solutions to how to, you know, different for them flowers. Um, I actually, for most years of my marriage, did not want flowers because they just die and I have to clean the vase. <laughs> so I, when, when my husband came on Friday afternoons, he, he had a bucket and a, 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 of gifts for me, uh, things I, ga kitchen gadgets and little bowls and little spoons and whatever. He always knew I was going to like it because I put it in the bowl, but I never knew what I was getting that. I put it in the box anyway, but he, I never knew what I was getting. So it was very surprise to me and it was always fun. So you have to figure out, I have so many bowls and dishes and spoons, <laughs> you know, but, but, I like that. And then when I'm, uh, when I have a huge crowd, everything has a different spoon, a different bowl, and it's just a fun thing. Um, unless I'm using paper, which is also fine if you're too tired. Um, so the bottom line to answer the question is that um, there are a lot of solutions to not being irritated, but irritation doesn't depend on external solutions just on external solutions it also becomes on us on a human being to recognize that our job is to become less and less irritated with other people over time as we mature and hopefully by the time we're old enough you know people can pretty much do anything you you know the old joke the the uh, the the kid is jumping on the bed and the mother screaming her head off or whatever and then then the grandkid is jumping on the bed with with an ice a chocolate ice cream and cranberry uh you know juice and whatever on her bed and getting spilling it all over and she's like oh he's so cute it's because her sublanus she's grown in her sublanus and her patience and her ability to carry the burden of the and then the yoke of the moment okay next question okay by the way that was scary how you went into patience but firstly before we go to the next question that ties into that um liana what do you mean says patience? My hubby, i didn't understand i'll I didn't tell you know. i'm gonna tell you in a oh, second okay, okay. My, my hubby has a pick of my favorite my fave flower in his phone for reference so points for um, Liana's husband. Who okay, knows which she <laughs> That's great. Okay. No, but you were just bringing up how the patience, the sublimness of as the grandmother is versus the mother. And we had a question literally on that. Zelda says she's working on patience. What is the most important thought to have when I feel overwhelmed? Patience with her husband and patience in her marriage. You mean in the moment she's feeling overwhelmed, like, ah, take a nap. Um, I saw <laughs> but that's not usually practical. Um, usually when you are uh, in a state of overwhelm, which kind of describes every day at around 535 or whatever, right? When you're in a state of overwhelm, the best thing to do to rather than pushing everybody away, which is the immediate uh, instinct, the way to bring everybody close is to actually admit it and say, guys, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm going to try and be as nice as possible, but help me out here, guys. So just ask for support. 
Um, it, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, you know, your husband might, you know, if you haven't explained this to him, say that when I get overwhelmed and I snap, there's a lot of women come to me and say, Leah, I, I just always snap. I snap at the kids a lot, but even worse, I feel so bad when I snap at my husband. I just want to eat my, I just want to reverse the time. I want to do play, instant replay and redo it. And, you know, what do I do? And a big part of it is growing in your own Savlanis and growing in your own maturity and mastery over yourself. But it's also when you do make these errors and whatever is saying you're sorry fast. Like if you say, if your husband comes in and he says something, you're like, why did you do that? You know, and that now whatever he did, let's say he, he, you had just cleaned the living room and he walks in the door. Hi, everybody. And he throws his briefcase. Do people carry briefcases or whatever? He throws his laptop. There you go. He throws his laptop. Sarit's going to make fun of me because I'm talking about briefcases. Um, he throws his laptop on the couch, couch and he then he throws his, um, uh, you know, his coat on the floor and he takes his shoes off and he messes up the whole living room that you just cleaned so that when he walked in, it would be nice. And, or you have guessed that night or whatever. And so, you know, now you say, what did you do? I just cleaned the whole thing. And what if that was the last, and it's the last straw of a whole day of aggravation, right? So, you know, and you scream at him. Now, what happens to your brain? Now, instead of going, ooh, I feel bad for saying that. I'm sorry, dear. Your brain goes to, he, I had the right to, yell. you defend yourself. I had the right to yell at him. He that was very thoughtless what he did. And I told him 10 times not to do that when he comes home that that upsets me and he forgot and he just did it anyway. And, blah, blah. and you keep justifying and justifying and justifying, making the whole thing, you know, you're basically here, here, here's your marriage right now. Your husband's getting pushed farther and farther and farther and farther away from you. Okay. That's really not the end result you want although it feels good at the time to be to let off steam you know it feels good but it ain't good um and so there what the secret is is the minute that something icky comes out of your mouth is to say before you even can think and start defending yourself and whatever just say you're sorry <laughs> just get it out just you know why did you leave the you know I, i'm sorry i'm sorry that, that was just kind of like a little last straw whatever uh, do you mind just moving your coat away from the thing or you go clean it yourself or whatever but the in the heat of the moment at that second don't let it you know just drift and drift and drift away from your husband just realize that the minute you say the harsh thing apologize as quickly as possible. And what that will do is two things. One is immediately he'll feel closer to you and won't, it won't drift away. And secondly, it will train you that not to say it because you realize right after you're gonna have to apologize, which is an unpleasant thing to do. It will help you to bite your tongue beforehand. And I would use duct tape. I mean, when you are about to explode, the, it's very, very powerful to just think of a duct tape going over your mouth. There's never anything. You can always say afterwards, I was upset that you dumped your, fo your coat on the ground, uh, that you put your, I asked you, yes. You can always afterwards say something, but if you say it in the heat of the moment, it's for sure going to come out worse. So that is a little bit of practical stuff. We'll get in a lot more into it, you know, um, as, as time goes on into how to handle these things. But for now, your immediate thing is to apologize instantly and and if you can use the dictate first and not say it, and then afterwards you can communicate in a way that he can actually hear. If you yell at him, it's going to go bad. Okay, next question. Okay, so moving on to the next topic, we just covered control, is um, the receiving. Uh, Deborah says, what do you mean when you say receiving from your husband? I thought we were supposed to be giving to our husband. What if he isn't giving much to you? Fantastic. Okay, here's the here's the revolutionary idea that is a game changer in your marriage. And this will carry you through to the rest of your life. You've heard it here first. <laughs> Maybe you've heard it before, but right now, Deborah didn't hear it first. So I'm gonna I didn't hear it before. So I'm gonna tell you right now. There is a Gemara, and this is also in um uh 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 Rav Moshe Cordovero goes into it quite deeply about the uh, the giver and the receiver. So the man is the giver, and the wife is the receiver. Okay, the the, the this is a, a woman, um, uh, you know, is giving all day long, but her giving is actually receiving. So let me make an example. Um, we spoke uh, last show about the fact that all blessing comes from the husband to the home. Uh, and nothing, there's nothing in your home. A grain of rice that is in your cupboard is 
from the blessing of your husband. Even if you, if you work five jobs and make all the money and he makes zero, the blessing for all that money and all of the, the uh, jobs that you have and successfully are doing, the blessing for that comes into the home and is actualized in the home through the husband. Not politically correct, watch last show and I explained it in a deeper way, but you have to understand, understanding that deep spiritual truth allows you to be able to maximize the amount of blessing in your home. And also gives a level of, of relaxation. It was very interesting. Uh, I, I was working with a woman about uh, micromanaging her husband and she, you know, and she was controlling you know, everything and whatever. And he didn't do this right. He didn't do that right. She didn't respect him. And, blah, blah, blah. and I said to her, listen, just for the week, don't interrupt your husband. Don't interrupt when he talks. Don't say, well, what about blah, 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 blah. And she goes, really? And she, I said, yeah, just start with that. So she started with that. And she called me back the next week and she said, she can't believe how much stress was reduced in her home. Like all she had, the, all she's been to like 10 doctors for the stress in her neck. You know, her neck is always like, whatever. She said, she said, there's something about just letting it go that is game changing. So this is what's available to you guys here. So the giver and the receiver is, Rav Moshe Cordovero gives over all bracha comes from Shemayim through the husband and to the wife. The larger a vessel for receiving that a woman is, the more blessing her husband will bring in. And, and Rev, uh, Nachum Sarah gives over um, that, that the way it works is the husband gets the blessing from the wife, uh, sorry, from God. And if the wife, he hands it to the wife. If the wife receives it, his hands are empty and God gives him more. If the wife doesn't receive his giving, it's, it's a stop that's put there or whatever. And the, the, the home gets less. Of, and by blessing, I mean, I mean, every way, health, wealth, um, uh, somebody's getting smart at math, one of the kids getting smart at math, the dishwasher not breaking, the car not breaking down, blessing in every manifestation that it is in your home, the more the wife is the receiver. Now, the question that she asked was, isn't the wife giving all day long? So from what I talked about last week about the all blessing comes from the husband, the wife might make the challah, you know, someone says, oh, she makes the challah, you know, she puts oil in it, she puts sugar, she puts a uh, flour, she puts um, uh, some, you know, whatever, whatever she's putting together, uh, eggs, whatever she's putting together for her challah. So she made him the challah, she gave him the challah. Ladies, who gave her the oil, who gave her the flour, who's the, I mean, whose blessing brought those things into her house, her husband. So how can, if he brought all the blessing for all the materials for making challah and she gives him the challah, what exactly is she giving? So, she, cause she can't give you her something. She can't give him something that <clears throat> he already owns and gave to her. What a woman's giving is, and we heard that we've got many sources for this, is the woman's receiving. The more she receives from her husband, the more he can give to her. So to answer when she said, oh, my husband doesn't give me anything. No, lady, you got it wrong. Your husband gives you everything. There is nothing that you have that isn't given to you by your husband. You are the receiver. And what if you had to stand on your one foot and say, what is our 3000 year old bulletproof track record of success in marriage? And that is the husband's the giver, the wife's the receiver. And the bigger a receiver the wife is, the more blessing will come into their home. Uh, through their husband, through the husband. And what does it mean to be a bigger receiver? That, that we're going to be stunning that pretty, pretty seriously. But just standing on one foot, it's being a receiver is being grateful and appreciating. Just remember the words, thank you, and keep saying thank you 10 times more than you're already doing currently. And you will see, start to see more and more blessing coming into your home. And it's guaranteed. It's not Leah Richheimer's great idea. This is this is our Masora from Harsina from 3 thousand years. It is guaranteed. Start today and you will witness miracles in your home. No joke. Okay. All right. Do we have time for another question? I, I think sure. one last question. Okay. okay. So one last question. We're tying it off. Rivka says, what if your constant giving makes you feel taken advantage of, makes you feel like you're a maid? Is there something wrong with your mindset? How do you find a healthy balance? That's fantastic. I couldn't have asked the question better myself. Fantastic. And you're absolutely right. Here's the thing. A woman is a bottomless pit of 
needing appreciation, married to a man who has zero clue on how to give appreciation, okay? We are going to spend an entire chapter on how to get your, how to feel appreciated, how to get the appreciation women desperately, desperately need. We're going to cover it greatly, but that's what's missing. If you had the appreciation that you needed in your life, which we will get to, and I promise you, we, you will after that section, which is, comes up fairly early in the book, in Marriage Secrets, if you have yourself appreciated, you won't have this feeling of feeling like a, a like a, a, your, what's the word she said, Sarit? She said a maid, and she doesn't want to feel like a maid. Right, right, exactly. If you had the appreciation, you would not feel like a maid. And there's a maid. And the other thing about it is that um, there is a mindset of a feeling that the things that you're doing when you feel like a maid, those things are holy. And th that's another mindset that you can get into, but that won't really work if you're not appreciated from the, from the uh, get-go. So I'm just going to give you one, standing on one foot, we cover it very deeply, but just... Um, in terms of getting yourself appreciated, don't be shy to say, wasn't that wonderful what I did, dear, and have him agree. That will help start to fill, fill your bucket until we get to the section on the six ways to get the appreciation that women desperately need, okay? That's just like a little, uh, a taste of it to get you started. Okay, I think we got, that's it we have time for. Very good. This is Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show. Really looking forward to seeing you next time. There's a lot of fun and type in your questions, info at ladiestalkshow.com and we will get them answered hopefully the next show. Thanks a million, everybody.